hello Hodge Gulashi fans and MTG Cubers and MTG fans alike. My name is John and I am recording a video today. Why am I recording this video on this channel that doesn't have Magic the Gathering content? Well we wanted to add some Magic the Gathering content so I thought maybe I could help fill that void. But to give you a little more background, I've also for a while wanted to do a show that's centered around talking about emotions and feelings and things that go along with playing Magic the Gathering, but just life in general as well. Um, give you a little background, I've been playing Magic for 25 years? 20? No, 20, about 20 years. Since around Odyssey Block, uh, about that time. I did have a 6th edition starter uh, in high school, uh, so that was when I first played, but just didn't really understand the game, but started playing late high school years, uh, you know, late teens, so around the time, I believe, right before Torment was released, so a long time ago. Took a lot of long breaks, um, came back to Magic Online around the... Um, took a break between, like, Mirrodin and Conflux, played for a year or so around then, then came back around Cons of Tarkir. Uh, I've dipped in and out of Constructed Magic. Uh, I do enjoy the modern format, Pioneer, currently. Um, but mostly, you know, I've come to find out that I am an old man, and the old man format of choice that I have finally accepted is Cube. So we have a new Cube going up on Magic the Gathering Online, for those who are unfamiliar. This is where you can play the Magic the Gathering card game, trading card game on uh, an internet database uh, <laughs> format that you can uh, play against other people via the internet. There's also MTG Arena, which we may play as well. But I'd like to kind of make this episode as kind of a pilot to see what uh, this show can be, what people are interested in, and just to kind of, you know, give it a try. Um, I am not the most experienced gamer, so if you're tuning in for um, awesome gameplay and uh, you know all these uh, high-level plays, I have to be honest with myself. I am trying to get better, and uh, I hope that's part of the show is that uh, you know people can help me with you know picks and plays and and feedback, and in turn, you know maybe we can have some conversations, uh, maybe some streams down the road uh, where we talk about. Uh, you know, the emotions that come along with uh, playing the game and, and, and just managing life in general. Given the current state of the world right now, you know, I just wanted to kind of put something positive out there. You know, I'm very much inspired by people like Jonathan Brostoff, uh, you know, Caleb, Derwa Caleb Derward, you know, great cube players, but also, you know, trying to, you know, have a good impact on the community in general. Um, so, you know, I just tried to take that inspiration and say, you know, what can I do? What's, you know, a little niche that I can carve out? Um, so, yeah, that's some background. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to talk here. We'll fire up a draft. Uh, this is the Decaru. Uh, I believe he is the wonderful proprietor of the awesome site Cube Cobra. So if Cube is something that interests you, um, it's a format where you take curated lists of cards throughout Magic the Gather Gathering's history and uh, you draft them in pods of eight players and, and build decks, you know, kind of on the fly. So again, for people who aren't familiar, this may seem, you know, like a strange game, but I'm sure that anybody that's listening to this is probably somewhat familiar. Uh, if you've made it this far, um, you know, five or six minutes in. So, so we'll just jump into it and we'll continue to talk as we go. Um, so going to talk through some of my picks here. Uh, Chandra Flamecaller, good one. Coalition Relic keeps us open. Uh, that's one thing you'll probably hear a lot if we do this here, drafts and things. Ooh, it looks like they updated the um, the visual visuals on the MTGO, so that's nice. Uh, hopefully you all can see. Uh, yeah, they overlay. I'm going to highlight Coalition Relic because I think that keeps us open. I am going to have to read some of the cards. And uh, it is a little difficult, this being one of my first recorded videos. A peek behind the scenes, I've recorded this a few times now. Um, and, and had some technical difficulties, so, you know, we can just kind of start there. Um, you know, again, I want this to be an open forum where people can talk about, 
you know, not just the plays that are made, but uh, give feedback on, uh, you know, how they're feeling while they draft, uh, the game in general, uh, you know, frustrations, um, you know, and, and encourage each other, you know, and how, how we get through that, how we improve. Um, obviously, how we deck build and how we play is important. You know, we're playing for points, we're playing for money, we're playing for prizes, so of course we all want to win, but, um, you know, I think part of that is is... You know, not everybody focuses on, you know, the emotional part of the game and, and how that can really help. You know, you can increase your win percentage just by, you know, not tilting off and not, um, you know, letting other things that are getting in the way of, of making choices in the game and outside the game. Um, so I'm hoping that that's what we can talk about. It, it may not be. It may just be, you know, this is just a place where you come to watch a little bit of low-level magic play, and that's okay, too, but... This is one of my favorite cards of all time. Hard to ignore awesome green cards. But like I said, Coalition Relic keeps us open. It does create mana. It fixes mana. So it leaves us open for a lot of different things. This is the first time seeing this cube, so I'm a little anxious about it, uh, if you want to talk about current feelings. Um, and like I said, I've recorded this a few times, and yeah, I'm feeling like this is not going so great right away. So... I'll just choose my favorite card, and we'll move on from there. Um, go for the throat, always good. Ilharg is a good uh, combo. Faith Fetter is good removal. We're not dedicated to blue. We could also take Rishkar and be like kind of an aggressive. This is one of my most hated cards all time <laughs> as, a, as a dedicated uh, BGX player. Um, but yeah. I wasn't seeing anything that jumped out at me, but again, I'm, I'm new to this cube, and that's part of what I want to work through is I really do have a hard time when it's not like, you know, a high-powered vintage cube, uh, legacy cube where, you know, there's kind of those staples that you just know. So this is kind of interesting for me. Um, you know, and talking about recording this video a couple times as well, um, you know, that was hard too, you know, a lot of things going on in the world. I'm working full-time. I... I, I fixed an air conditioner today didn't really feel like doing this but you know what i said you know what you you just have to you have to push through that um you said you were going to do this put it out there you know i can't control how people feel about it i'm taking too many three drops um okay so maybe we're in the right lane if we take elvish mystic um not really paying attention uh right now so maybe i should have drafted this but beforehand but yeah again this you know that's that's what i want to talk about you know, sitting down to draft cube again, it, it's a fun thing, but you know, I do, I do still have a hard time. Oh, I like blood artist. Um, you know, understanding my picks and, and then getting frustrated or, or focusing too much, you know, which is exactly what I'm doing here now is kind of forcing my favorite strategy instead of, um, instead of maybe looking a little deeper at what the cards do. Again, I, I have a long history with the game, but you know, I, I'm, you know, nowhere near where a lot of players are at. Um, some of the cards I still have to read. Aetherling I've seen a million times, but still don't remember all what it does, so I'm really enjoying this um, nice new overlay they've they've put on here, so you don't have to zoom in. But, um, yeah, oh, the, yeah. well, we're going to stay with green. Let's see what we get. Love this card. Love Deep Forest Hermit in any cube it's in. Um, yeah, so, again, you know, I've... I've recorded this a few times. I wasn't happy with it. The quality of the video wasn't very good and kind of reflecting on it. But again, I just, I said, you know what? Sometimes you just have to put it out there and see what bounces back. Uh, I can't control, you know, what people will say in the chat. I can't control uh, any more than, you know, I can't control what picks come in what order in the cube. You can't control a lot of things in this world. Um, but what I can't control is, you know, again, I'm trying to get better, trying to reflect on these picks. If anything, maybe this video will just be something for me to watch and go back and and figure out, uh, you know, what I can do better each time. Ooh, Isochron, it's up there. That's pretty cool. And maybe I should talk a little bit more about the picks and kind of recap what my thoughts are on uh, on what this, uh, this space can be for myself and for other people. You know, in the end, again, it may just be something for myself and, and maybe a couple buddies watch it and, and that's okay too um you know i can't can't always jump as far ahead as that you kind of just 
one day at a time right now in general and we'll just say you know one video at a time but if people have topics they want to talk about oh I guess I, I probably should have mentioned um, hopefully we can ramp into this uh, fauna shaman can be good uh, I did happen to catch Jaybro's sh stream before and and I hope I'm saying the name right Dekaru did, he said that there wasn't a lot of dedicated reanimation spells I did like Wretched Confluence as well choose three modes target player draws to a card and loses one life target creature gets minus one minus one minus two minus two Are we splashing here or are we just cutting green and seeing what happens? You know what? For my first video, I'm cutting green. I love green. Um, ooh, I wonder how this is good in the cube. How good is this in the cube? Oh, Woe Strider. We could do some sort of aristocratic green with this. Um, do we have anything that gives plus one, plus one to maximize Rishkar? That would be nice. We'll take one anyway. You know, again, it is what it is. Obviously, again, oh, this was our first pack. Like that autumn, but you know what? I'll take that. Um, yeah, for, you know, the first video of this, yeah, I'm definitely somebody who forces green a lot. And, again, we're, we're playing for, for points. We're playing, you know, for pride. Um, but... Do some sort of reanimator. Choose two cargo creature. But you know what? It's also, you know what? People can play for fun. I do think that um, on face fetters or whip. I do think that people focus a lot on winning, and winning is fun and all that. But um, you know what? Cube is, is great to me because you can sit down and be like, you know what? Soul Herder is my favorite card ever, and I'm going to force it no matter what. And you know what? You can do that because cube can be what you want we have a buddy we play with who you know we joke with he seems to take the three mana uh ashiok that uh mills opponents and takes creatures he, he seems to take it whenever it's available and you know what that's great i don't think we're gonna play that oh wait doesn't that return oh that steals sword of vengeance first strike trample haste okay try it I've never played this in cube, never used, played it in general, but uh, yeah, that should be good. But yeah, that's that's what I like about cube. You know, Soul Herder is one of my favorite cards. If I want to take it first pick and I want to force it, again, you you do. If you're going 0-3 in every draft, you're probably not going to have as much fun. Maybe not, um, but you know, I've definitely had drafts where I've gone 0-3 and had just as much fun. So, um this would be something we want because you know this and these so that seems pretty good um, I don't know if crater hoof behemoth is in here for those who know the cards by name um, but that would be very good we're looking for black splash we're probably not going to play this because we're playing dorks but we can put these off into the maybe pile what does this do while we have a little bit of time in between picks you know utilize my time to kind of think things through. Choose target creature card in your graveyard. Yeah, so with the dorks and things like that, that could be really good. Uh, with Fauna Shaman or if we get Pack Rat or something. So I do like the idea of the Black Splash. Yeah. But this is what we want. Again, not as good as Crater Hoof Behemoth that's Big Brother, but still pretty good. And I actually kind of like maybe a little better um, as someone who loves crater hoof um you know it's really powerful and this cube seems like it's very much curated to um not you know the vintage level of power at least that i can see again being somewhat of a novice only really focusing on cube the last few years um you know i know the cards and i know you know um i don't know ancestral recall is powerful but you just in the in the context of cube i'm still learning you know there's cards that you know, you wouldn't think Porcelain Legionnaire, but it's insanely powerful. It fits in so many decks and it fixes so many aggro holes and it's, you know, 3-1 first strike for 2 um, is very good. Baleful Strix, well, that that 
Well, that might not seem as powerful, but to some people. But you know, again, those cards you might not think. But um, yeah, I don't see anything that's jumping out at me. Um, I'm still not locked into black. I'm not seeing a ton of fixing, so I don't know. You know, it looks like the fixing in this cube is is again a little bit powered down, which is again I'm I'm definitely all for you know trying something like that. Oh, I do know what this card, but what does it do? Oh, I mean, that seems really powerful, but I may get that back. It doesn't seem like anybody else is green. Um, Goreclaw, very good, but that's more in the bigger deck. This is just good in a lot of decks. Um, but this is also very good. And I did, you know, a Sylvan Library type effect in green is pretty good. Um don't really know this cube again from what I'm seeing. Oh, also Phyrexian Metamorph, really good. Huh. Um, you know, from what I'm seeing again, maybe the power level is not vintage or even legacy level, but still, you know, difficult for me to gauge. And again, part of what I'm trying to figure out, how do I sit down to an, you know, to a new cube environment that I'm not familiar with and try and parse through it, you know, which other people do insanely well. Um, I'll take the Hydra. Um, ooh, Nightpack Ambusher. Vivian. A Signet. If we're trying to ramp, that could be good. Haven't seen a ton of ramp. Again, I have Coalition Relic and a couple dorks. Uh, Dread Return. Hopefully we'll come back. So we can sacrifice it. Or we can uh, flash it back. You know, right now we just have the two. So not really. We can just cast these, but... I like Nightpack a lot, but I think I want the Signet. So I will take it. Acidic Slime. Ooh, Pack Rat. We could be some sort of reanimator. Hmm. Interesting pick right here. But yeah, while well, I think about that, uh, we're about halfway through Pack 2. I should have probably mentioned, you know, 10 minutes in here. Um, you know, I am a licensed clinical social worker. And, you know, I hope that that background can help. Um, I think I'm going to stick with me. Uh, I'm not seeing the fixing, so I'm going to go with this. Um, ooh, Death Club. So, you know, for 15 years or so, I, I mean, I've had my license for about 10 years, 11 years now. Um, you know, I, I am a licensed clinical social worker, and hopefully, you know, this is, that is something that can be helpful in this, um, you know, in working with human beings and working um, with kids and adults and, you know, everybody across all different ages and, and working through, uh, you know, a multitude of issues as I've done for the last decade or so. I, I'm hopeful that that is helpful. I, of course, have to give the disclaimer, you know, this is no substitute for, you know, professional help. I'm not, you know, trying to be, um, you know, I'm not trying to be uh, a substitute for, even though I am a professional, not in this capacity, I'm not. So, you know, I, I hope that it can be helpful, but, you know, if people really, you know, are struggling with issues that are really getting in the way, you know, I, I hope that they can go on and, and be encouraged, um, by myself or other people that participate in this, um, you know, to seek help outside or, or you know, again, it, maybe this will, will be somewhat helpful in, in, in guiding people and just offering, you know, that uh, safe space to talk about uh, whatever people want to talk about. I guess I'll try that. Ooh, Wishkana, one of my favorite cards ever. Ooh, this should be good in draft. Well, I mean, it's good in draft, I don't know. Start equipping it. Ancient Stone Idol is cool. If I had gone with the reanimator. So, so yeah, uh, again, you know, 20 minutes into the video, I apologize. <laughs> again, I've recorded this a few times, so I feel like I'm saying it a couple of times. I don't think I'm going to get Delirium anytime soon, so. Vessel of Nascency. 
can return things to your hand. Prismatic lens is kind of a poor man's uh, ramp. We'll go ahead and take that. Yeah, we're just not seeing any fixing, so I don't know if we're going to get there. I mean, we can split. We don't have anything where it's like Brian Ruffalo's, Ruffalo's um, you know, the elf where it matters for forests or anything yet, but we'll have to see. We'll put that just in case we do get... Oh, it did come back, so that's good. Spider spawning, create one for every creature that's... Okay. Or that. No, I, I think we're off. Of, I think we're off of this now. We are going to take this just in case we end up splashing that. But are we a stack stack? I don't know. No, we're definitely not a death cloud deck. No, too many black pips, which obviously is part of what you want to think about, you know, when drafting. But we've got we've got quite a few playables here. So, not doing too bad. I mean, it is cube draft, so yeah, you're always going to have a lot of cards. Um, it'll take me several drafts. And again, you know, that's it's it's a challenge because you know you are using your tickets, your 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 money's going into MTGO, so you don't just want to flush them down the toilet and play poorly. Um, so I, I you know I can certainly understand that people get upset. I do. You know, uh, I wasted, you know, 10 tickets. I wasted three hours of my life. You know, you start thinking things like that. But, you know, you have to let that moment pass and kind of go back to why Why do you play. And, and uh, you know, I play Magic to have fun. Talk to, you know, a few of my buddies about, you know, plays and cards I drafted and things like that. And that's that's what I get enjoyment from. So I try to get back to that as, as quick as I can. Sometimes it takes me a couple of days to get over it. Creature enters the battlefield, you may pay two if you do. That creature is controlled by me. Huh, so you can copy things. I mean, that seems pretty good. Conspiracy card, though, that, that is definitely a group of sets that I do not understand. Uh, I'm going to take the ramp, though. Ranker, Oracle, seems good. Still, what I wouldn't do for an overgrown tomb. Yeah, I think I'm going to have a hard time in these first. And we'll see. I may just post this um, this draft, this kind of discussion that we're having right now. Uh, it's getting on to about 30 minutes now. Uh, or, or I, You know, I can also post the gameplay video as well. So I'll talk to my editor-in-chief and see, see what we think about all this. So I hope people are enjoying it so far. Again, my first time. Ooh, Armor Elf, Ripjaw Raptor. Drawing cards in green is good. Kozilek. Again, I think the um, reanimate plan has flown the coop. Still no fixing. All right, we'll take Armor Elf. We'll kind of just go on the end raise for a runner. We could cord for Forerunner. We already have um, Fauna Shaman to try and tutor for it. We have Winding Way to try and find it. Mary's Guy will help us find it. I'm going to take Eternal Witness, again, one of my favorite cards of all time, and very powerful in this environment. If you know, if you get manatized or counterspelled or whatever, um, I could ramp into this too. You may exile a creature card if you do. I'm interested in trying that. Wall Blossoms could be good. Draws a card. But you know what? Again, let's have a little fun. Well, we'll see where we're at. We'll put it in here now, but we've got quite a few top-end cards. We want about 23 cards. We have a little bit of ramp, so maybe we could cheat on land. But it's a fun card. Bestow make, becomes an enchantment. Moldrift are always good. Yeah, so maybe we just maybe we did see the fixing and we were just too busy yakking again. I, I'm new at this, so that's you know something I'm also gonna have to work through is getting more comfortable. Uh, again, just kind of speaking openly, you know, just the idea of doing this, even though 
you know, I've been a professional for a few years. I've played Magic. I've I've recorded other things on the internet. Um, you know, just that idea was still kind of anxiety inducing. It was, you know, it makes you nervous. You don't know how people are going to react. And, you know, I've stammered and made plenty of mistakes already that I'll probably think about before I go to bed today. And that's just, that's who I am. I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate to that. Um, yeah. And it's, it's sometimes talking through it, working through it. Um, you know, maybe I listen back and cringe a little bit at myself, but you know, I, I think that that's okay. You know, we we're all going to make mistakes, and some of that's going to be driven by you know anxiety and other emotions. And I'm a little bit tired. It's a night. <laughs> Not to make this a video of me whining about stuff, but um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of things going on, and and I just wanted to kind of have like a targeted outlet. And and I I have been playing. Ooh, birthing pod. We finally see the, the fixing. I have been playing a lot online, so I also thought, you know what? It's it's a chance to maximize that time. Uh, I have two young kids. I have a wife. Um, so the time I get to play Magic, you know, can make it uh, something I can share with other people. So um, It's only plus one. I mean, it's still probably pretty good, right? I wonder if um, deranged hermit is in here. I love the double, the double hermit team up is my favorite thing. But oh, I should have taken that for spider spawning flashback. Damn. Well, I mean, we could still put a couple in black. This will take me a while to build, so maybe that'll be something too. Um, I can do a building video. I can do right before the game player just jump into it. Say what are my decisions so people aren't <laughs> listening to me stammer through it but you know I'd like to keep the videos to an hour I know that games of MTGO in general you know can take a while um, so we'll see yeah I may do highlights I might do um, you know skip the draft uh, although I do I do really enjoy the draft portion and that's where I that's where I think I struggle the most so I could definitely use some feedback there but um, I don't really have anything blue to splash. Dig through time is really cool. Um, well, I don't know. In case some crazy bomb comes to me in the night. Uh, Rancor, we can take. It keeps coming back. I don't know if we're going to play it. We're going to play the dorks. Probably going to play this ramp. These couple things. Nature's Chant, we can sideboard. Winding Way. I don't know. We have 18 creatures. But we'll see. Pelucranos never seems like it gets me there in other formats. But again, this is different. So I may find Pelucranos is better. I mean, it's a 5-5 five, five for 4 in general. Something we can birthing pot away for, you know, acidic slime or something. Maybe we don't get there with the spider spawning. I don't know if... I know that card was huge in its draft cycle. But I don't know if that's something... Um, was that Sh Shadow Moor? No, I don't remember. Um, I don't know if that's something where you need to be milling more into the graveyard, like Genesis. I believe I did. I read a little bit of the Watsi article on this cube, and it did talk about, you know, graveyard matters. So that could be a thing. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, this is part of my struggle again. You know, it, but, but I'm sure that's a lot of people. Not everybody's going to fire off, you know, a 3-0. The first draft, well, I mean, a, some amount of people have to, right? That's how it works, but, you know, not everybody's going to... If there is some sort of reanimator, I guess we can take that. Um, Good board and a mana tithe. Get people. <laughs> get people with that mana tithe, but... Yeah, I think we're going to make the tagline and maybe we'll end it here. Um, you know, like I said, my, my purpose in this is hopefully some people can benefit, you know, it, whether it's just from watching an, an, a novice player um, try to improve, whether it's, you know, 
giving feedback to me, that's great. Um, or, you know, maybe, again, maybe it's something we jump onto a streaming platform where we can talk more openly together about things that are going on. Um, maybe, you know, in the comments, you know, we can we can talk through some issues that we're facing. You know, I'm, I'm open for whatever um, people want to interact with. And, you know, I think whether it's Magic the Gathering or whether it's, you know, dealing with pandemics, uh, whatever's going on, you know, I, I'd like the tagline to be, we get better together. So I think that that's true in Magic the Gathering. Um, you know, hassling people in chat and on social media and, and, and complaining about their plays or how, you know, Shuffler, you know, wasn't on our side or things like that. I don't, I, we, again, I'm not saying that people shouldn't do it. I don't get in the habit of telling people what they should and shouldn't do. Your emotions are your emotions. And, you know, they in turn lead, you know, to how we interact with the world and, and our behaviors. But, um, you know, I, I want to focus on, you know, positivity. Uh, and I, I think that that is really you know, what we need right now in the world, uh, and, and in magic in general, magic can, can be a negative environment, but it can also be a very positive thing. And again, with the people I mentioned earlier that in, inspire me, um, to want to make content and, and to be part of this community, you know, I want to piggyback off of that. And, I, and, and that is not to say that I am a positive person all the time, or even most of the time. Um, but, you know, I can still be honest with myself and try to get better. So hopefully, with that being said, um, you know, I can be the cube counselor, uh, or you can be my cube counselor, and we can get better together. And I thank you for listening. All right, and we are back. There probably wasn't much time between the video. Um, but just to give you some background, I did play a couple matches. I'm one in one. Uh, after the first round getting de absolutely destroyed by... Mono Black Aggro, which was uh, a little bit surprising. It's not always supported in, in the cubes that I've uh, participated in, so that was a little um, unsettling. <laughs> but uh, cool deck. Uh, opponent obliterated me in, like, turn five both games because um, I don't have a lot of interaction here. Um, tried to throw out some blockers and things like that. Didn't work out. So this is the build that I settled on. Um, you know... I'm open, again, to criticism for those who watched the draft. Uh, but yeah, kind of a traditional-ish um, mono-green ramp deck. Um, probably not enough ones, but uh, in the game two, match two that I played, um, and raised four runners, I think one won me both games, went to three mat went to three games, and won me both games that I played. And, uh, yeah, I was hoping maybe if I had had better um, low drops in here, definitely would be even better. So, uh, this hasn't really worked out yet, God Pharaoh's Gift, but I went with 16 Forest because I have so much ramp. That might also be wrong, considering I did have a couple times where I was sweating if I was going to get to 8. Or had to use, you know, part of it is when you use these to ramp out and raise for a runner. Um show that for people who maybe aren't familiar. It doesn't um, always work so great when you have to tap three mana dorks, two mana dorks to get it out. So anyway, uh, we're one and one, so we were feeling pretty low after <laughs> match one. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned this in the draft portion, you know, 10 play, t 10 tickets or 100 play points. Not the end of the world, but you know, you do want to at least get your two wins, because you get your 100 play points back, you can run it back, uh, you know, that's always fun. Um, so yeah, I was feeling a little down after that, uh, went to three games, uh, was sweating through match two, uh, but at least we've got 50 play points now, we're getting half our play points back, we're feeling pretty good, and we're hoping to get the 2-1. Um, so yeah, we're going to fire up a match here. Um, see if anybody's on. Just to give you a little background, you can see right here in the corner. Oh, we got a match right away. So maybe it's somebody like myself. Um, you know, again, on this, in, on this show, whatever iteration it ends up coming out, we're, 
We're going to mulligan this because we're going to be dead by turn three if we don't. And we'll keep this. Got ramp. We got some interaction in, in some form. Um, so we are. I, I don't know if you can hear that, but the <laughs> sound effects I thought that were turned off on MTGO are distracting me with their <laughs> their strange sounds. I still wonder to this day why they put these things in here. So we're going to keep. Um, they also mulligan, so that's a good sign. And we're actually going to put. We're gonna put back one of the larger drops, so we're gonna put back Woodfall Premise, since we're if we're casting something, we want it to be that. And they go first. F8 through their turn, but yeah, to give you some some background, it's about three in the morning Central Time here. I've been up for a little bit, tossing and turning. Um, you know, again, if that's what we're here to talk about on this channel, and you know, just having some trouble sleeping, which isn't isn't regular for me usually I'm a, I'm a decent sleeper um, usually wake up one time through the night uh, and then uh, able to go back to sleep Ooh, doom blade all right all right what have we got a signet to back it up you can't doom blade that and if he's in black probably doesn't have artifact removal so it is what it is we traded one for one two mana for one mana not much we can do about that Ooh, there's a spider dropping down in front of my screen too uh, yeah, but not to make this sound like the ramblings of a madman. Um, yeah, so couldn't sleep. Started thinking about some other projects I'm working on. I have work today. Um, just not really looking like I was going to fall back asleep. So I thought, you know what? Let's work through that. Let's uh, do something that we enjoy. Which, you know, the idea of recording this video has, um, you know, it's got me, you know, a little anxious, a little... Um, you know, not necessarily anxious in the worst way, but, you know, just kind of anticipating we're going to play Pelucranos. Mimic Fat. So, yeah, just wanted to kind of work through that and thought, you know what? If that's what we're here to talk about, I'm going to record it, and we're going to work through it. We're going to see how we do. Uh, you know, so my voice is probably a little hoarse compared to the first part of the video. But, uh, yeah, again, if that's what we're here to talk about, then let's just, you know, wasn't my intention to record at 3 o'clock in the morning and and uh, you know when now is probably not the best time to play, but you know sometimes I I I do this if if I can't sleep and I'm not really able to start work, you know, um, then why not you know play some magic even though it gets you a little amped up because you know you're excited to to play uh, and try to win. I also. Um, you know, it is, it is also cathartic for me. Um, what are we going to try for? We need, definitely need lands, but we're going for creature. We got more. Okay. What do we reveal? We revealed Hydra Tracker, one land. And, ooh, and this would have been good, but that's okay. All right, so we're going to play the elf. So, yeah, I mean, obviously magic is a lot of us do it to blow off steam so to speak, to, you know, to cope with what's going on. And, uh, you know, I mentioned in the first part of this video, obviously now is a stressful time in general, and I do think that that's impacting me. I also, um, you know, have some other personal projects that I'm working on that, you know, I'm, I'm excited and I'm nervous, uh, you know, to get them going. Um, so, you know, uh, work in general is, is stressful. I, I, another peek behind the curtain, I, I work for, I'm a social worker now at a, at a public aid, um, at a insurance company for persons that are on public assistance. So, you know, there's been a lot of anxiety there. Um, you know, again, I do have to work later today, so hopefully after this video can fall back and get some restful sleep dreaming about Cube. Um, wow, this is an interesting deck. Uh, I guess I'm just going to attack until I can get my opponent dead, but if he starts crewing this thing, I'm going to be in big trouble. Hmm. Yeah, we're just going to monster us here so we can get him bigger. I don't know. Alright, smokestacks, for those who aren't familiar, I have to start sacrificing things, so um, there was not a counter on it yet. It has to go to his turn first, so we have a little bit of time. 
So I think what we want to do is play it. As I mentioned in the draft portion, one of my favorite cards of all time. So we're going to get a clue off of that. We can sacrifice the clue, and it will give us the plus one, plus one counter here, even if we don't utilize them. Um, we don't pay mana into it. We won't get the card, but we will get the counter because it says whenever you sacrifice. So for those not familiar. So I think I, I probably just, yeah, I think I just want to attack. So a very interesting deck. Um, we've seen a lot of spells, but, you know, with Mimic Fat, I would think he wants creatures dying. But, yeah, but that might be where Smokestack. So he may have just drawn the wrong, he or she, I should say they, um, probably just drew the wrong part of their deck. And that happens a lot of times in cube and, and again this is a format that's been up for um, you know 36 hours or something like that if, if somebody's not familiar with it as i'm not you know i, I kind of defaulted to mono green but i'm not really seeing other people play this so you know i've been watching some videos frank lapore did a video watching caleb derward dra drafted jonathan Brostuff. stuff you know not not seeing this strategy okay now we're starting to see some of their synergy so all right, now do we want to sacrifice the clue to that? No, I think we just want to draw the card. All right, so now that we got one counter on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. If we Hydra, what happens? If we, another non-token creature, so we can kill her with the Hydra. One, two, three, so we need to Hydra for three. So we can sacrifice sacrifice the signet. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Oh, and we drew the land, great. Alright. So I think we're doing just fine, because then we can attack. Or do we want an extra counter? Hmm. Do we want an extra counter? I don't think so. Because we're going to attack... Well, maybe we do. Yeah, I think we do want the extra counter just in case they kill this. So trying to think ahead and again, a little foggy here at early in the morning. So we are done. We are paying our four. We are going to fight this creature. Oh, he can mimic, can he mimic that? It? No, it's three. Okay probably should have crewed there yeah he should have crewed oh he can't it has to have three power okay all right so we're doing good going into game two and you know again if we win we get our play points back we can run it back we can do another draft uh in this case hopefully i can go back to sleep <laughs> that would be great so and maybe we'll draft again Eh, who needs sleep right it's only, you know, one of the most healthy things you can do for yourself. So what are we wanting to do here? He had a ton of... A ton of artifacts. So we're going to bring in the Nature's Chant, uh, which is artifact removal, again, for those who don't know. Hybrid, so I can cast it for green. Um, I'm probably going to take this out. I mean, it does kill our opponent faster, but it ha it honestly hasn't worked out in many of the games. I did have one game where I almost got there with Tireless Tracker at like a 7-5 or something like that. And with Vigilance, it's, it's a, you know, and First Strike, Trample, all the, all the keyword abilities you would want on an attacking creature. But just don't know if that's going to get us there in this particular matchup. So. Way over here, you may have seen in the deck build, we do have Hydra, which has been good. Got Pharaoh's Gift, I haven't seen much. Do we want to smokestack their smokestack? Probably not. Um, do we do we want to play this just for the find half? I don't think so. Do we want Rancor to get them dead quicker? I think that's all we want. So we'll submit. So far, the 16 lands, like I said, has been okay. 
I'd have to go back and rewatch the videos, and, and that's something I can do as well if I'm not able to record all the videos in a match. Um, oh, they mulliganed again. We're going to keep, because we have some ramp and we have ways to interact. Keep. We're going to F6 to their turn. You know, if that's something that people want to see, you know, all the videos of the draft, we can try to do that. We can do the replay function so we can go a little faster. I, again, the video is already, you know, well over an hour now, so don't want to make them too long. want to make them digestible, so something to think about. All right, so they played that. They'll probably kill this, but, you know, that's still what we got to do. We cannot control what is in our opponent's hand, so we will just play out the best play that we can make. Sorry, I did notice, I did listen back to the first part of the video, and I know there's a lot of rattle. Oh, that is really good. Holy Jesus. Now we understand what they're doing. Wow. Oh, jeez. So there goes pretty much our whole plan. We could catch back up with this. They're probably going to play Smokestack before that. I don't know if we can beat this on the draw. Hmm. All right, we're going to discard a card. We're going to discard Oracle. We might not ever get there. We're going to sack a creature. And we're going to sacrifice a land. Well, that was a blowout. Definitely one of my favorite cards to play in an 8-rack style deck. One of the only modern tournaments I ever won was with 8-rack. <laughs> you know, nothing big, just a 8-person a tournament, but... So I do have a fondness for this card, um, but man, that's irritating. So yeah, let's hope he doesn't do something like that again. I don't know how many other effects like that there are in this in this draft set, so hopefully not another one. And again, sorry, I'll try to limit the microphone rattle. I did notice my headset does rattle a little bit, so we'll try to be mindful of that. And let's see, all right, Dreadhorde Invasion, so a little bit like, if you're familiar with the card Bitter Blossom, it's going to make him one dude and then continue to make said dude bigger. So, I don't think we're too intimidated by that. So, I think we're just going to play our land, play our lens. Which is an okay ramp. A mind stone that doesn't draw you the card later. Um, which I am liking. The, the balance in this cube is, is really good. Um, I did want to talk about that from what I've seen so far. Um, you know, signets are really good in most draft formats. But beyond that... Um, you know, sometimes using things like Remonolith or other busted ramp strategies makes things a little uneven. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, cool balance things that I've seen in this so far. So, obviously, an experienced cube designer, uh, you know, I tip my hat to Deckeru. Is the Gwen Decker is his, is his name? I, I did confirm he is the um, proprietor for Cube Cobra, which is an amazing site if you haven't used it for tracking your own cube and, and what cards you have and what, you know, testing drafts and all kinds of things you can do on there. So obviously, again, an experienced cuber. So what are we doing here? Probably Miri's Guile so we can start to find what we want. Do we want to kill that? Do we care? It's only, it doesn't make the flying fairy tokens like Bitter Blossom, so it's just going to be this one guy who's going to continue to get bigger. Uh, we can see if they play Smokestack next turn uh, or something like that. That's a little more threatening. Hmm. We definitely need lands. We're trying to get to this. But we also we need, a, we need some plays here. We did play a land already this turn. Just trying to talk through, talk it through out loud. Um, yeah, I'm not going to nature's chant that. I'm 
going to winding way. I'm going to hopefully not whiff. Beautiful. Hit two again. Revealed two lands. Not good. Hopefully got some more coming. Other good thing about winding way is they I like this card as it helps graveyard strategies as well. We're not really doing anything with this, but if I did choose land and had gotten the two lands, uh, you know, obviously with something like this, that would have been huge. Um, all right, so we don't have any other plays, so we'll pass the turn. And now we are up a game here, so we have we can take that. You know, you can take that as you will, and that sometimes helps you play a little better, knowing that you have a game to give away. Excuse me. You know. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So again, I do think that that. It's going to be a problem for us long term. They only have one card in hand. They also mulligan. Oh, we can also, if we draw a land. Okay. Yeah, that's great. If we draw a land, we'll get rid of it that way. And we have Miri's Guile now, so we're going to be looking at the top three cards of our library every turn. So we'll try not to mess that up. Okay, so no, no counters on Smokestack. Again, it is delayed. I have to start putting counters on it. So we have one turn. All right, yeah, I think we just want the land. Oops, this is putting him back, so I almost messed it up. Um, so I want to put him back in that order. And then I want to play the land, and we'll play the slime because that gives us the opportunity to kill this, and it's a death touch blocker for. This Dreadhorde Invasion, which continues to tick down. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we know we have a forest on top of our deck and the Arbor Elf, and then one unknown card when we Miri's Guile next turn. Um, so hopefully he attacks here, and then we can kill this next turn. And play the Rishkar, and then continue again to find our forest or ramp or whatever. Excuse me, to get closer to... God Pharaoh's Gift. We only have one creature in there now, but you know, if we block with this and it dies, we can bring it back as a 4 4 death touch. It will also kill that. Alright, he's not going to attack. But that's fine again. As this makes this bigger, which is cool, but you know, obviously, Bitter Blossom, much more powerful card, would definitely be very difficult for us to beat right now. All right, so we're just going to continue to get our lands. So we'll put this back, put this back. You know, again, don't know if that's 100% correct either, as we do. We're about to play Rishkar here. All right, we are going to attack, put the pressure on them. Again, they only have one card in hand. If it's a removal spell, it is what it is. Alright, so he is going to block, so we're going to get rid of that. We're going to Nature's Chant. This. Not as intuitive as Arena, obviously, it's, you know, making you choose your mana for the hybrid cards, but. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one more, and we can God Pharaohs. Next turn, so we're just going to go ahead and play this. He's, again, he's got one card in hand. We're losing a little bit of value as we're not getting the second counter that it gives, but it's a 3-3 three, three that also creates mana, so can't complain. And let's see what our opponent draws and what they want to play. If they have something like... Um, Wrinkle Dankle. They have Wrinkle. Um, that would be a huge blowout. And they're paying five mana, so something big. It's something scary. What is it going to be? Oh, my lord. I should have guessed that. Oh, man. Now I think we're in huge trouble. We'll never get to that. Well, it's only for two, because it does cost a lot. Probably. I don't know if he should have done it for three. All right, it is what it is. Uh, Death Cloud, another card that I really enjoy, um, but not enjoying it so much right now. Probably shouldn't have played this. Uh, discard two cards. Yep. 
Sacrifice two creatures, only have one. Doesn't do enchantments or artifacts, so that's something. Alright, so we still have the Guile, so now we can kind of draw ourselves out of it. But they're out of cards, they sacrifice land. We're at kind of parity as far as lands go here. Always yield. Alright, so do we want the Hydra? We want the Signet. Gosh, hopefully we don't have too many, too many more of these effects that are slowly killing us. What do we want here? Yeah, I think we want the Signet. We do not have much card draw side of Tracker and the Guile, which again, I, this is such a great card. I mean, it's Sylvan Library is insanely powerful. And this, is, I think it's a better, more balance. It gives you something to do on turn one if you draw it, and then kind of smooths out your draws so they have no play, probably drew removal, as that's the style of deck that they seem to be. Um, and what do we want? One, two, three, four, five. Alright, so we're going to take the Elf this time with the plan of playing a big Hydra eventually. Um, not the most exciting. Oh, maybe they didn't have removal, or they didn't have instant speed removal. Oh. Did we see this game one? Was that the one we saw, or was it, um, I think we saw Council Flagship. Or was it this? It's going to be difficult, obviously, for them to crew. We haven't seen any large creatures. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I think we're just going to play another threat here. If they didn't have, if they didn't have the removal, oops, don't do that first. I've done that before. It does not let you go back, even though it's a mana. It's you know, you think of it as a mana ability. It does not let you go back on that and undo it once you've chosen to target a land that's already untapped. So, learn from my mistakes. It's hopefully part of what we're here to do. And I totally forgot his secondary ability because I rarely ever use it. But that's an 8-9 creature. Hopefully they don't have removal. Already down to 14 because of their own Dreadhorde invasion. I don't think we attacked at all. Okay. All right. Not the most exciting game, but I'm excited. Um, you know, if we're talking about feelings and things like that, uh, I get excited by this thing still. Again, only $10, 10 tickets, 100 play points. I traded in cards to get those play points. Um, so, yeah, you, you want to keep going. You want to get your entertainment value. So, so great. First draft in this, we got. 2-1. Again, the, that might not have been the most exciting match to showcase. I, I don't think that their deck maximized what it wanted to do. Um, so we took it down 2-0, but um, still, I liked uh, you know, I liked that we were able to do that. I liked that we were able to 2-1 in the first draft on this channel. Uh, and that we were able to talk through some, <laughs> some challenging things that we're going through right now. Um, and again, hopefully, you know, after doing something a little productive. You can get back to sleep after this. I'll let you know next video how it went. Um, if not, you know, we'll go on to something else. We'll have some breakfast. We'll exercise. We'll, um, you know, maybe start looking at stuff for work, get a little early start on that. Um, you know, we'll work through it as best we can. I'm in a fortunate situation. Um, I'm able to work from home right now. I'm able to do things like play magic and afford, you know, the tickets and play points to do that. So I do want to emphasize that. I'd like to end the video on a positive note and just say that, uh, you know, even though I talk through, you know, challenges that I might be facing, um, you know, in a kind of a cathartic way for myself, you know, I hope that that helps other people understand, you know, we can work through these things. Um, you know, not everybody's going to be in as unfortunate position as I am. So I certainly understand that. Um, I'm not expecting people to... Um, you know, apply exactly what I'm doing. You know, most people, you probably shouldn't be getting out of bed to play, you know, a stimulating game like Magic uh, and then try to go back to sleep. But, but you know, again, I think we'll close the video on that. Uh, and again, hopefully, uh, through these videos, as I said uh, in the draft portion, 
uh, we can get better together. So I thank you for listening, and I hope to see you soon.